Good evening. Former Chief Secretary for Administration Henry Tang was out and about today putting on a charm offensive, although he has yet to confirm whether he will run for chief executive. And we now know the date of next year's election. Evelyn Lung reports. A chat with youngsters training to become hairdressers at a vocational training center facility in Kwaichung today, a public relations exercise worthy of any chief executive election campaign. Yet Henry Tang, after quitting as chief secretary for administration, was still keeping everyone guessing on whether he will actually run for the top job. I believe they all have uh, aspirations and expectations. I. I'm, I'm encouraged by the positive attitude of our youth. And one man who has featured prominently alongside Tang in recent days is Lao Ming Wei, the son of tycoon Joseph Lao. When asked if the younger Lao would be part of his team should he run for chief executive, Henry Tang said the younger Lao has been actively involved in society and could help him over youth-related issues and activities. But Henry Tang would not be drawn on reports of his extramarital affair. He simply repeated that he has nothing to add after an earlier statement saying it was a mistake he deeply regrets. Another potential chief executive candidate, Rita Fan, has also not indicated whether she would run. Today, Fan said she had not been aware of reports of Tang's extramarital affair before they were made public. She was asked how she feels about someone governing Hong Kong if he can't even sort out his own family affairs. I think we should turn the attention to what the chief executive could do for Hong Kong, could do for Hong Kong people. The government announced today the CE election will be held on March 25th next year. 1,200 members of the election committee that elects the next CE will be chosen in a poll slated for December 11th. Evelyn Lung, TVB News. A recent Hong Kong University poll shows support for the chief executive and the new chief secretary for administration has dropped to a new low. According to the poll, Donald Zhang's disapproval rating has hit an all-time high since becoming chief executive. Only 24 percent expressed support for him, while 69 percent gave him a vote of no confidence. Poll organizers say that puts Tsung in the disastrous category. New Chief Secretary for Administration Stephen Lam has a support rating of just 38.5 points, the worst ever scored by a chief secretary. More than 1,000 people took part in the phone survey conducted between September 26 and October 4. Organizers of Hong Kong's first cross-harbor swim in 30 years say there are no plans to cancel next Sunday's event, despite some alarming findings. Researchers from the Open University recently took water samples along the route of the race. The levels of E. coli bacteria they found were way above the Environmental Protection Department's acceptable standard for swimming near beaches. Meanwhile, government test results showed that the bacteria level was more than two times above safety standards. The organizers of the race say the high levels of bacteria might be the result of the recent typhoons. This year's Nobel Peace Prize has been awarded to three people for their work in improving women's rights around the world. Among the recipients is Liberian President Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, who is hailed for improving the lives of her people and promoting peace in West Africa. Here's Tony Sabine. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided that the Nobel Peace Prize for 2011 is to be divided in three equal parts between Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, Leima Bowie, and Tawakul Karman for their nonviolent struggle for the safety of women and for women's rights. And with that, three women were added to the roster of winners of the world's most prestigious humanitarian award. Liberia's president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, is arguably the most famous of the three, becoming Africa's first democratically elected female leader in 2005. Her fellow Liberian, Lehman Bowie, was also honored for her work to challenge the power of Liberia's warlords at the height of the country's civil war in the late 1990s. The other recipient is Tawakul Karman, who's been a leading figure in organizing the protests in Yemen against the rule of President Ali Abdullah Saleh. But the Nobel Committee said the award was also to recognize the work she did long before the Yemen uprising started. Tawakul Karman showed the courage long before the revolution started. Many years before, she stood up 
against one of the most authoritarian and autocratic regimes in the world. The Nobel Committee also dismissed suggestions it was helping Sirleaf by giving her the prize so close to this month's presidential poll. We looked to who has done the most for peace in the world and not being a party to the quarrelling among journalists and political parties in a specific country. Last year's peace award went to jailed mainland dissident Liu Xiaobo, who's serving an 11-year sentence on subversion charges. Tony Sabine, TVB News. South African peace icon Archbishop Desmond Tutu celebrated his 80th birthday today in the same church he once preached against apartheid. U2 frontman Bono was one of many rock stars, politicians and parishioners who packed St. George's Cathedral in Cape Town to celebrate the man who sits on a panel of global statesmen. Tutu, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1984 for speaking out against white minority rule, has remained one of the world's most celebrated figures and is widely seen as South Africa's moral compass. Asian stock markets rose strongly again today. Investors reacted positively to news that the Bank of England will turn on its stimulus taps. The European Central Bank also announced new short-term loans to banks that are facing difficulty securing funding. James Lagilia reports. Asian stocks continued to rally today after recent sell-offs. Here in Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index added 534 points, or 3.11 percent, to close at 17,707. This followed a 5.6 percent jump yesterday. South Korea's Kospi surged by almost 3 percent today, while the Nikkei in Japan gained almost 1 percent. Many other Asian stocks also finished in positive territory. Today's gains in Asia followed an announcement by the Bank of England that it would pump another 75 billion pounds into Britain's stagnant economy, reviving an asset purchase program. The bank's decision came earlier and was bigger than many economists had predicted. A dozen British banks saw their credit ratings downgraded today over doubts about the strength of the government's support. We're doing it because there's not enough money in the economy. Now, that may seem unfamiliar to people, but it is unfamiliar. That's because this is the most serious financial crisis we've seen, at least since the 1930s. And the European Central Bank offered new emergency short-term loans to the continent's battered banks, but kept interest rates unchanged. I think that what the European bank did was really to give a, the, mark, uh, the market a signal that it will not let European banks fail. Meanwhile, U.S. President Barack Obama launched an onslaught against banks and Republicans for working to block financial reform. Obama said recent hikes in fees charged by banks were likely unfair to consumers. But those banks, like Bank of America, say they raise certain fees because, like European banks, they're in trouble and need revenue. James LaGilia, TVB News. Fed up with corporate America and economic inequality, the Occupy Wall Street demonstrations are spreading like wildfire, with tens of thousands joining rallies across the United States. They have denounced Washington for supporting American corporations, which they say are ducking their social responsibilities. Sonia Artero has more. Human needs, not corporate greed. Just one of the thousands of protest signs demonstrators are using to voice their disgust with Wall Street and politicians for protecting corporate America at the expense of the middle class. Angry words in Sacramento, California. This is what democracy looks like. And what you need to say now, it's my money and I want it now. Bring the war dollars home was the main message in this rally in the city of brotherly love. In parts of Texas, frustrations ran high. 1% has too much control, and it's been like that for decades, you know, but now uh, people have had enough. A people united will never be divided. Clever chants were heard in Washington, D.C., where hundreds marched for the cause. Cuts the way. Make the corporations pay. Our government doesn't represent us anymore, and that's really what brings me here, is, is to get our country back to the values upon which it was established. Passion turned to anger in New York's financial district, where the Occupy Wall Street movement first started. Protesters scuffle with police in one of the latest rallies there. The fact is that the financial institutions that we have in the world 
are just not very helpful to, the, to most of the people in the world. They, they enrich a small number of individuals, uh, largely at everybody else's expense. Sonia Artero, TVB News. Buckingham Palace confirmed today that Prince Harry has arrived in the United States to undergo eight weeks of military helicopter training. The live fire Apache chopper course is being held at the Naval Air Facility in El Centro, California, where its hot and dusty conditions replicate that of Afghanistan's harsh environment. In preparation for future deployment, the third in line to the British throne will learn to fire missiles, rockets, and cannons from the Apache helicopters. Harry is among 20 students in the British Army participating in the training. Now back locally, a Chongcha resident has been defeated in a legal battle over ferry fares between the island and Central. Kenny Kwok, who heads the Chongqiao Neighborhood Association, had filed a judicial review. The legal challenge was aimed at narrowing the difference between Monday to Saturday fares and those on Sundays and public holidays. Kwok accused the Commissioner for Transport of breaking a promise to bridge the gap between the renewal of tenders for services to outlying islands. After the tenders were renewed earlier this year, ferry fares went up and the gap stayed the same. But High Court Judge Johnson Lamb ruled against him today, saying transport officials had already tried their best to help narrow the difference. Kwok said he will appeal against the ruling. Increasing health care spending and pushing ahead with medical reform have been key issues in the chief executive's policy address in recent years. Ahead of Donald Zhang's final policy speech next week, critics say more needs to be done, especially now that Hong Kong faces an aging population. Jenny Lam reports. Encouraging cooperation between the public and private sectors is one way the government hopes can help alleviate the pressures on public hospitals. Four plots of land have been allocated for construction of private hospitals. There are now a vaccine subsidy scheme and healthcare coupons for the elderly. The government has also set aside $50 billion for medical reform and increased healthcare spending from 15 to 17 percent of total public expenditure. But is that enough? No, according to this patient. That's because doctors are charging more and drugs are getting more expensive. This man says most elderly people have to wait at least a year for cataract surgery in the public health system. Peter Yun, the Dean of Polytechnics University's College of Professional and Continuing Education, questions how the government can possibly have the resources to provide maternity care for mainland women when local people have to wait so long for basic treatments. He said while encouraging the expansion of the private sector, the government must address a manpower shortage in public hospitals. Tim Pang, a patient's rights advocate, says the government should improve people's overall health, be it physical or psychological. The government needs long-term policies, he says, to reduce the threat of major diseases and ailments such as colon cancer and high blood pressure. Officials now face the challenge of providing adequate health care for an aging population. Jenny Lam, TVB News. In sports, England manager Fabio Capello expects a relaxed and calm Wayne Rooney as England plays Montenegro tonight in Euro 2012 qualifier. Yesterday, Rooney's father and eight others were arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to defraud in connection with a Scottish Premier League betting scam. 48-year-old Wayne Rooney Sr. has since been released on bail. He has denied the charges and vowed to clear his name. Meanwhile, England needs just a point from tonight's match to assure qualification. And finally, a quick check of the weather before we go. There will be sunny periods during the day. Expect a high temperature of about 29 degrees. And that's our news. Thanks for joining us. Good night.